pardoned tens of thousands of marijuana prisoners. This is our opportunity to speak out and give the president the backbone he needs to get this done. One more, Chris. Chris is another victim of the drug war. How old were you when your father got taken away? Uh, 13. 13 years old. See, I mean, um, so he, you know, uh, you know, I'll let him tell a story, but you got to understand that um, these two got separated and we're not going to ever get them apart. So they both get to speak together and travel here together. And, uh, you know, their story is, is the story. It's not just the prisoners we throw in jail, it's the families that we're terrorizing here. So who's first? Go, go ahead. Let's start with you, George. Start with George. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm George Martirano. <laughs> For all men dream. They are the dreamers of the day who wake to find thought and passing. And they are the dreamers of the day. A wondrous lot because they act out the dream to make the act happen. And yes, I had life no parole. And yes, I was documented, slated, black and white, to die in prison. What to do, what to do? Well, I guess I was from good stock. I continued to fight. I did 32 appeals. Uh, no one hurt, hates the word denied more than I, no one. Uh, in that tendrum of uh, those years, I became uh, an educator, a mentor. I'm very proud of that. That was one of the deciding factors upon my release, okay? When I hit the 30-year mark, basically by the, law, the statute of old law, they were supposed to release me. <laughs> but you must understand the government. You must understand the Justice Department. You must understand the Bureau of Prisons. Not one signature, there's only one signature and uh, that lets you out of prison. And uh, basically that would be uh, the president or a federal judge, okay? But to get to that point, even though that one signature releases you, to get to that point, you need multiple deciding factors of individuals of other departments. It's like wall, stone wall after stone wall after stone wall. Okay, more about the Hempfest. It's not just what you see, it's what you didn't see or what you didn't hear. Uh, some years back, uh, the good people at Hempfest, uh, Sharon Woodson, Adela, etc., all the people, all the advocates, they start sending funds to me. Okay, I took those funds and I had many lifestyle change classes. And in those classes were basically the violent and the dreads of society. So not to go mad because in 32 plus years, you know, Madness was a factor, but I fought it off by keeping busy, educating so many. And the funds that the Hempfest would send, I would buy, actually I had to buy my hard copy materials for the curriculum for these classes. I designed personally and approved, and approved by the Bureau of Prisons. Incidentally, the Bureau of Prisons was established in 1936. They needed a department to oversee Alcatraz, and now it expanded where it is today. I'm proud to say, since 1936, I'm the only federal prison that was approved to create his own curriculum, and that's actually, the, the slang word for the Bureau of Prisons is keyed in. In other words, it's keyed in in your uh, computer program under your name for the credits that you would do with these programs that I created. And, uh, so you go, I can go on and on and on. The, my stories are basically a river of stories. Again, as I said in my first talk this morning, uh, don't be that impressed with me because better men than me have died in prison, okay? And there are women just as much languishing in prison as men are in this country. Now, uh, I got free after 32 plus years, so you might say you wondered, I should be on beaches, I should be uh, enjoying myself and not at these type of places uh, speaking, but as soon as I came home, I did a lot of advocate work for so much in our society, especially in the city that I come from to, uh, yesterday, Philadelphia, you know, the poor, the poor neighborhoods are growing so violent. So 
you know, what we're trying to do, us guys at that, we had no chance, guys like me and Jeff, our sentence was death. We come home in a body bag. Make, make sure you understand that, okay? It's released upon death. So we had these senses and we didn't become, you know, monsters. You know, we didn't let hate overtake us. So we, 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 we did a lot of examples and examples are still existing so much so that good people out there, the advocates, you know, want us to continue to speak. So now there is still, if not thousands, put away with that sentence and the only thing you can do we need everyone we're not we're not saying that you have to go out and march we're just trying to say you know lend lend an ear lend some of your heart you know do a little something write a letter and just try to help there's so much that still needs to be done thank you i'm george martorano